Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the first in a series of DocuShare webinars. And we are glad you're joining us today to learn how to automate and simplify your document intensive processes. And today's speakers, we have Coleman Murphy, who's the Senior Director of Marketing of Xerox Workflow Automation in the Large Enterprise Operations. We have John Mancini, who's the President and CEO of AIM, and he's going to talk about information chaos. And we have Joni Wu with the Enterprise Content Management Architect Organization and uh, Xerox Corporation. That's her role. And without any further ado, we're going to turn it over to John Mancini, President and CEO of AIM. John, you have the floor, sir. Well, great. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here today. I uh, really appreciate the invitation. And this question of automating and simplifying your document intensive processes is really a critically important one right at this particular juncture in time. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about that, maybe put that business problem in a broader context, and um, talk about why it's so important right now. So by way of introduction, for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with AIM, uh, this is where we focus on in terms of our core vision is that our objective is information at work that's simple and secure and available anywhere, anytime, and on any device. And we are a nonprofit association, and the mission is really centered around this whole question of information-driven innovation. And our role as a nonprofit is bringing together a community of leaders to share experiences, um, share best practices, to um, share data about how to go about this. And so if you're not familiar with AIM and you'd like to get connected with us, um, a great place to go is the website at aim.org. Um, we also have an um, 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 e-book that I've written on some of the topics that we'll talk about here. I've made it available um, free to the people on this call. And that's at aim.org slash info chaos. So you might want to just think about that along the way. So without further ado, let me just hop in. Um, I like to refer to this as the um, – um, we're in a period of what I call the Big Bang right now. And, and the reason I call it that is that uh, we're a period of, of some very fundamental disruption. And it, and it plays back on this question of the, of the webinar today on document intensive processes because um, it's my contention that this question of process um, and, and how those processes work and how effective they are and how exposed they are to um, our customers is something that is changing really dramatically. And we've got to get those things under control, and we've got to start with document-intensive processes. And so you can sense an unease out there. Um, there was a Harvard Business Review survey of how CEOs feel about their CIOs. And the data is just unbelievable when you start thinking about this. Um, almost half the CEOs in that survey felt that IT should be a commodity service purchased as needed. Very different approach to thinking about IT than has been characteristic of the last uh, 10 or 15 years. Um, about half the CEOs rated their CIOs negatively in terms of understanding the business and understanding how to apply IT in new ways to the business. Um, only a quarter of CEOs thought that their CIO was performing above his or her peers. So it's a really disruptive time, and it's a really unsettling time out there. And so what I want to do is talk a little bit about what's causing that disruption and some of the issues that we need to think about along the way, and then talk about how that plays into some of the different business processes and different roles within our organizations and why it's so important to get those um, under control moving forward. So as you think about this, um, I like to think that there's three big disruptors that um, organizations are facing out there. Um, the first one is consumerization. And, and the reason this is important is that it is dramatically transforming what our users in our organizations expect from applications, um, how we deliver them, how complicated they are, um, whether you know, we can still get away with you know, the model that we had in years gone by where we would expect somebody to take like a three-day training course in order to know how to use a business application. Um, those days are gone. Um, we are clearly in an era of user-centric IT. And it's not just a question of people using portable devices and things like that. It's a whole question of how you think about process, how you think about applications, and organizations, when they think about their enterprise applications, have got to start thinking in very, very different terms, reflective of this big disruptor of consumerization. 
The second one, which is actually two, but I put them in, together in one, is uh, cloud and mobile. And, and the reason I put these together is that um, it, it, they're like mutually reinforcing steroids, if you will. Um, you know, one leverages off the other, one reinforces the other. And, and again, the, the, the important thing here is just not that a lot of people are looking at enterprise information on cell phones and tablets. That's obviously you know, a big change that we've all gone through in the last uh, five years. Um, but again, it's this question of how that combination changes the expectation of how we work, um, where we work, um, how our customers interact with us, how our customers experience us, and how that then maps into the business processes that underlie all those experiences that both our employees have as well as our customers. So again, second disruptor is this intersection of cloud and mobile and how they reinforce each other. And then the third one is actually the one that's most nascent. This is the one that's, uh, that's um, coming at us very, very quickly is this whole question of the Internet of Things. And um, you can put a lot of labels on this. There's an awful lot of hype in this area right now, whether it's um, big data or analytics or the Internet of Things or what have you. But the fundamental thing that I think is driving a high degree of chaos in organizations is that they haven't thought through what the implications are of massive amounts of data coming at us at faster and faster velocities, and with greater and greater variety. And that combination is a huge disruptor moving forward. So as I said, um, I come from a nonprofit association, a community of information leaders in the end user community. And so I thought it might be useful just to reflect on, well, what do I hear from all those guys? You know, what do they try to tell us? You know, how are they experiencing this disruption? And I think the, what, you know, kind of putting a, a wrapper around it, you know, what I hear from them is that our processes are broken, we're buried in information, and it's killing our ability to satisfy our customers. And that's a pretty challenging place right now. You know, on the one hand, how we manage our information assets is increasingly a core competitive differentiator of our organizations moving forward and a core source of value moving forward. And you think about the kinds of traditional businesses that have been disrupted by information-centric um, revolutions. I mean, we have a, a current one right now. You look at something like um, Uber and how that's influenced the taxi business. That's essentially an information-intensive business laid on top of a transportation business. And what that's done is basically taken a business that nobody thought could be um, disintermediated and totally turned it on its head. And that's happening in more and more and more places. And so if you think about this in the context of business process, you know, break it down and think about it in terms of the point today, which is automating and simplifying your document intensive processes, you know, I think it's useful to think about some of the roles that people have out there in our organizations and how those document intensive processes um, uh, impact them. And so you know, when I think about this from the perspective of process workers, you know, what we have right now in a lot of our business processes is we have an awful lot of gray spaces in between very discrete business processes that are populated by knowledge workers who are basically um, holding them together. And the little vernacular I put around this is, you know, the, the exclamation from these folks is, you know, quit making us enter the same information in five different spreadsheets. You know, quit making us the glue that holds together the process and have the systems be smart enough that they can connect with each other. Second thing is from knowledge workers. We hear this all the time, you know, this notion of we're drowning in information but thirsty for knowledge, which then says that our business processes and our document intensive processes have to be looked at from the perspective of delivering the right information to the right person in the right context at the right time. And that's the only way we're going to be able to overcome this explosion of information that's coming at people. You know, I talked to security folks, and they're really challenged right now. You know, they're saying basically information's leaking out of this organization on devices that weren't even invented when we put our legacy systems in place. And that's a huge challenge moving forward. You know, on the records management side and on the e-discovery side and lawyers and folks like that, you know, they're basically facing a tsunami of information. You know, the old ways of thinking about records management processes don't work anymore. You know, they're all still based on paper paradigms. And so we've really got to rethink those processes in the context of the volume of information that's coming at us. 
I think then there's the last couple, you know, you think about IT people and, you know, there's countless books that have been written around this whole concept of the gap that exists between IT strategy and business strategy and that we've got to cross the chasm that exists between those two um, uh, perspectives in our organization. Um, but that challenge is getting more challenging rather than less over time. And it's getting more challenging principally because of that consumerization disruptor that I talked about earlier. And what you have going on now is basically business people, if they're not satisfied with what they're getting from their IT people, there almost always is some consumer grade application that they can deploy at the you know, click of an iPhone that basically will bring an entirely new application into the enterprise. And so IT people face the challenge that they are being increasingly end run by the business. And how do you get ahead of that curve? How do you do something about it? How do you manage that in a more um, coherent way? And then to go right to the top, you know, the, the last impact of, of all this disruption is the C-suite right now is really struggling with this question of legacy versus investment. And um, th this becomes increasingly challenging in an era like the one we're in, in which the technology itself is changing so rapidly. And so the fear that the C-suite has right now is that you know, they look at the way that we've traditionally thought of IT. They look at the way we've traditionally looked at our enterprise systems. And they know we have to figure out some way to get better leverage and spend less out of that so that we can take that and apply those resources to new innovations that we need in our organizations. And that tension is getting you know, more and more acute, I think, as, as time goes on. So as you, as you think about this, I think all this, the, the concept that I want to leave behind is, is like an uber concept, if you will, that, you know, that is atop this whole question of document intensive processes, is that we're in a disruptive time. The kind of information chaos that we have in our organizations is increasing, not decreasing. And we've got to figure out some way to intervene in that process um, if we're going to um, optimize the information assets of our organizations. So one way that I think about this, um, I have this little uh, tongue-in-cheek thing sometimes I, I use called uh, Mancini's Law. And it has kind of three principles to it. Um, and feel free to quote this like Moore's Law or anything else out there. But, but the first one is that organizations are systems of information networks. And they only operate effectively when there are clear and predictable information flows uh, within and between those networks. And 50% compounded annual growth in the volume of digital information means that these networks, and especially the points of connection between them, are going to become increasingly unstable in our organizations. And the third premise here is that without intervention, the resulting information chaos is going to threaten the viability of the entire system. So those three premises, that's what information chaos is all about. And uh, that's really the, the, the context, I think, that we have to think about our document intensive processes. So as you think about this, I think what I would urge you to do is really think about breaking this question down into four business questions. And you know, they center around you know, how do I minimize the risk of information chaos? You know, how do I use information to engage my customers? You know, how do we automate our processes? And how do we extract some sort of insight from all this information that we are gathering all over the place? And those are complicated questions. Um, but I think that if we, if we take a step back, and if we, if we imagine ourselves in the role of trying to sell systems up the organization and you know, take IT perspectives and turn them into business perspectives, they really center around these four questions. And the webinar today focuses really on those two in the middle, you know, that question of the information for engagement and information tied um, to process automation. And so as you, as you think about that, you know, I'd, I'd just like to leave you with a couple of data points because um, you know, where we are right now is that um, we are in a really challenging time with regards to process automation. And those of you that know AIM um, and maybe have been around AIM know that you know, this question of transactionally centric content and documents um, in the context of business process has really been the, the heart of what um, AIM has been all about for years and trying to help organizations do that at scale. And so when you look at this right now, the challenge out there is that we still have a long way to go. 
and we still have a long way to go in the context that these processes are increasingly exposed to our customers as never before. So just some of the data points, this is from some of our research with end users. You know, 51% tell us that half or more of their business processes are not straightforward or predictable. So those old simple workflow models are necessary but not sufficient moving forward. 58% um, tell us that you know, how do you handle information in the context of a particular case or a particular customer is increasingly important. You know, we do have some good news in that paper is decreasing, but it's actually increasing for one out of five of the people that we survey, which is just really, really amazing when you think about it. And then the last data point before I, um, I turn it back is, you know, we've got this challenge in that most enterprise content still sits outside um, ECM systems. And that doesn't mean that everything has to be brought into a single system, but it does mean that we have to start looking at how we rationalize those processes, how we federate those processes, how we gain some modicum of control across those processes, because that's the only way that we're really going to ultimately be able to survive information chaos. So without further ado, I will turn it back to the host, and happy to answer questions. And again, um, if you need any information on context of what we talked about today, just go to aim.org slash info chaos and you'll, um, you'll get a, a white paper on it. So thanks so much. Thank you, John. You really set the stage for the next two presenters, and I think people are really thinking about this whole idea of information chaos right now. So we're going to turn it over to Coleman Murphy, Senior Director of Marketing of Xerox Workflow Automation in the large enterprise operations. Coleman, you have the floor. Great. Well, thank you, Mike, and thank you especially, John, for uh, that, that series of slides that were data and information packed, and also uh, I love the, the photographs that you used to illustrate your points. I do see a question here asking if these slides will be available, and the answer is yes, this entire uh, webinar is being recorded and will be available after the event. So if you didn't manage to take down all that information, don't worry, you'll, you'll get access to it. Um, and uh, on a personal note, let me just say it is great to be on the call today with, uh, with John Mancini from AIM. We have a, a long relationship going back many years at Xerox and at other companies. So uh, it is great to work with you again, John. Thanks for taking the time to be with us today. And for those of you on the phone, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, for those of you on the phone, uh, you should also know this is the first of a number of series of engagements that we're doing with AIM throughout 2015. Uh, so we're having another webinar with AIM in a few weeks. We will also be at the AIM conference in March. And uh, we've got a few other things planned as well. So please stay tuned. And um, if you haven't signed up with either Xerox or AIM, make sure that you do that. So continuing the theme of the business challenges that, uh, that organizations face um, around information, the reality is that even though many processes have been automated, even though people have desktop and uh, mobile tools that help make them more productive, overall business processes are still untamed and highly chaotic. And this, this takes place across all departments within organizations. And of course, as you get into vertical industries like healthcare and financial services, um, this becomes even more challenging where you're also dealing with compliance-related issues. Um, Xerox Workflow Automation Business Unit is focused on addressing these issues. So our, our charter, our call to action is we want to help automate and simplify our customers' business processes with a focus on eliminating the inefficiencies from paper-based workflows. And paper-based workflows can be um, truly paper-based, or it can be, in today's environment, the digital proxy of something that was previously paper-based. So you may still have an invoice um, processing system where you receive the invoices in paper format, but they're immediately scanned that does not necessarily by itself solve your business challenge around how to be more effective in processing invoices, making sure you take advantage of early payment opportunities, um, and just generally being more efficient with a, realistically a, a significantly reduced workforce compared to even five years ago. Um, our focus is to help you with that. Uh, the general umbrella term that we're seeing out, out in the industry 
uh, and that John covered pretty significantly is this area of digital transformation. So helping organizations move from um, somewhat disjointed work practices that, uh, that are more legacy type of practices, um, even if they have been digitized, moving from that kind of an environment to, um, to a much more digitally native uh, business application. John mentioned um, Uber as an example. So if you were to think of that as being the destination, pun intended, for uh, a practice, a work practice, then we within the Workflow Automation Business Unit at Xerox want to help customers get there. Um, and that, that is both your engagement with your customers, so helping you be more efficient and um, generate a, a better experience when you interact with your customers, as well as helping you to optimize your back-end infrastructure so it's just generally more efficient, helps you reduce uh, cost, risk, delay, um, and labor-related um, labor challenges. And within workflow automation, we kind of break down what we offer into two different classes of solution. One is just a general set of uh, offerings on the bottom that help knowledge workers be more efficient in their day-to-day uh, work practices. So tools like Digital Alternatives, if you haven't heard of this, um, go to xerox.com slash digital alternatives and check it out. It's a personal productivity tool that's really designed to help people have the experience that they have when working with paper. So you can easily annotate documents, you can share them, you can um, forward them to other people, you can share them across devices. But also on the back end, it has a full suite of analytics and reporting capabilities. So you can actually understand over time how people are using documents, what percentage are using on mobile devices, and this can in turn feed into process reengineering or certainly process optimization. Uh, and of course, DocuShare. Um, hopefully, everybody on the phone is familiar with DocuShare. Um, we have our cloud offering, which is again designed to help uh, knowledge workers and teams be more productive when collaborating with either other teams within the enterprise or um, third-party organizations, and assessment services that support all of this. So that's our our kind of uh, office or personal workflow solutions. But then we have a whole practice built around providing highly targeted, uh, customized solutions to address the needs of specific industries. Um, we focus on the list that you see on the screen here. And rather than spending a whole lot of time talking about what we do, I'm actually going to hand it over to Joni Wu right now. And she will walk you through a real customer example in the healthcare space where we have um, we've provided significant benefit to that organization and helped them optimize um, some pretty challenging businesses business processes that they had to deal with. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to you, Joni. Thanks, Coleman. Hi, I'm Joni Wu. I'm at the Enterprise Content Management Architect for Xerox Corp. So to automate and simplify, uh, at Xerox we have a consulting practice to help clients uncover challenges, bring forward insight to opportunities, and to design optimal solutions and services. As a solutions architect, my role focuses on the upper tier, the transformative solutions. I specialize in assisting clients with the management of information systems and in helping them realize maximum benefit from investment in personnel, technology, and business processes. Using Lean Six Sigma methodology, I assist clients in producing solutions outlines and migration paths to show the evolution of a solution from baseline state to target state. For the Xerox Content Management Group, I focus on architecting enterprise content management solutions to utilize workflow automation tools to complement existing infrastructure and to manage a seamless transition from paper to digital workflows. Uh, the journey today we, is focusing on a mid-market enterprise with distributed dental offices. The IT operations manager knew that there was a better way to manage all their paper files. There were traditional paper patient folders behind the front office staff. All correspondence, lab results, x-rays, and etc. were all stored in the paper records. So these are the traditional files that you see behind at all of the front office staff. Even though the files were digital to begin with, they were generally printed out to be stored in the patient files to ensure that the patient records were complete and stored in one single location. 
the staff did not want to work with a hybrid of both paper and digital files. Each office managed a patient file slightly different due to the business practice at each location. However, their disposition policies for the patient files were all the same. They kept everything just to be safe. Even after printing, the digital files were kept just to be safe. There was no time to go through the older patient records to ensure that only the active patients were available. So, you know, active patients to ensure that to enhance productivity and maintain lower storage and space requirements. Those goals were not maintained just to be safe. So at the corporate offices, they also had trouble maintaining all the paper files from the accounts payable process. Invoices were generally sent to the corporate office, but they needed to be uh, needed approvals and validation of receipt at the various branch offices. And in some cases, the clinics would receive the invoices and would in turn send it to the corporate office for handling. The document capture and approval process was cumbersome and time consuming. The IT manager had, asked, had been asked to look at the content management capabilities from both within the financial system, SAGE, and from the patient record system, Tracker, during his quest to digitize his files. Ultimately, he did not want to manage two disparate content stores. And due to the existing relationship with managing the hardware for print and providing the capabilities uh, for digitization of the paper documents, the client asked Xerox to assist to see if there were better solutions than the application-specific approach to the document storage. Out of the process, we determined that the customer had three distinct requirements. First was to meet cost and compliance. They wanted to reduce and eliminate printing and document management costs of approximately $25,000 to $35,000 per year. Then they also wanted to ensure appropriate retention periods. So it's four to 10 years for patient files and seven years for AP files. They really wanted to move away from the mandate of keeping everything. Second, they wanted automation. They wanted the same business process and document filing practices to be consistent across all the different offices. They want to ensure easy accessibility, and they also want to implement workflows where specific users were automatically notified for AP approval process and document receipt for outstanding patient records. They, they wanted automatic escalation to ensure approvals were completed in a timely manner and that patient records were automatically updated upon receipt. And third and most important, it was user experience. They wanted to ensure that the offices were willing to use the new system and to ensure that all files were stored digitally. The last thing they wanted to implement was a solution where the users were trying more ways to find out how not to use it. At the offices, they wanted to provide easy and immediate access to all the patient files via a centralized repository. All the offices were Mac-based instead of the traditional PC, which really limited the application pool for the software. They wanted the solution to be intuitive for the front desk to add information. And they also wanted to add access to files from within the third-party applications, so within Tracker and within Sage. Uh, the users did not want to go into Tracker to update the patient data, then go into another system to update and find the patient files. The Xerox process from engagement to rollout was completed in about 15 weeks. We started with the engagement and information gathering phase where we discussed with the IT manager in his requirements. Then it was the process mapping phase where we contacted the various front office staff at the different locations to, to understand their business practices to find commonality in the steps. We also received feedback from the users on what they would like to see to ensure that they were engaged in the process and to achieve a high user adoption. All the processes were then mapped and compared. During the design phase, we had discussed with their third-party IT that support both their Sage and Tracker applications, so both their CRM and their uh, ERP, to determine how we were able to achieve accessing the files from within those applications. In working with the IT manager, we had to find the best plan for rollout to ensure that we were not overwhelming the users. We had focused on the patient files as phase one of the rollout, rollout as that impacted the office staff the most. 
Once they were used to the new applications, we would then roll out to phase two, the AP process, and so forth. To bring together the paper and digital worlds, the solution included Xerox DocuShare for their electronic content management requirements for both their patient records and their AP documents. We put in the document connector, which allowed integrations with both Tracker and Sage, and the users were then able to access the pertinent information from within those systems. Tracker would access all the patient records, and Sage would access all the AP documents. As the third-party applications needed detailed metadata properties to accurately map out the right document, for example, the patient file would need the correct patient number, uh, patient name, and et cetera, uh, we needed to put in a work queue to allow easy document profiling with database lookups for minimal data entry. As they already had a fleet with Xerox MSDs, we utilized Xerox Connect Key for DocuShare to streamline the scanning of the files directly into DocuShare. Noting that the, the user environment was Mac-based, we simply put in one DocuShare server that would manage all their files. Scans from the Xerox MST went straight into a web viewer for easy profiling and ensured access from all the different mac -based desktops. Upon scan, documents were automatically converted into a searchable PDF for full text indexing. Once documents were profiled, they were automatically stored in the proper predefined file hierarchy for patient files for easy access. There were plans to arm each dentist with their own mobile device to access patient files in the future. Xerox DocuShare already supports mobile devices with an iOS and Android app. To break down the solution even more, the work queue that you see here provided a simple UI for front desk to triage the documents for profiling. There was a shared responsibility for the document filing so we needed an interface that mimics the paper file inbox for filing. Normally, this is the stack of files on the desk to be sorted and to be placed into the respective patient files. We now had a digital view of this inbox process. Once they clicked on the document within that queue, they get a side-by-side -side view of the documents that required profiling. The patient queue is linked to the patient data in Tracker so that we were able to receive easily get the patient ID, name of birth, date of birth, et cetera, to profile each document. For each document, users simply had to type in the patient ID and the document type. The patient ID automatically brings back the patient name, date of birth, phone number, and location uh, from tracker. The document type is a predefined drop list, i.e. the charts, insurance documents, x-rays, et cetera, for consistency across the offices. Once the document is profiled, it is automatically moved out of the queue to be automatically stored in each patient record. As the patient records needed to be accessed from within the tracker software, we had worked with the tracker team, the FD team uh, from tracker, to customize a button to automatically retrieve the associated patient file from within the patient data screens. So the screen that you see here is within Tracker, right? So that is the patient record file. As the documents were already profiled with accurate and detailed metadata, the button is able to retrieve the pertinent patient files with the click of a button. This addition into both Tracker and Sage for the financial document utilized the DocuShare document connector module and were easily implemented within the respective applications all within one day. So the automated record filing. The filing of the documents within the patient records is automatic as we know the patient ID, name, and document type from the profiling. This ensures that the filing across the various office is the same and adhere to the standards outlined by the corporate office. As the profiling matches that of the patient data in Tracker, we are also able to ensure that the patient records are not stored in the wrong patient file. There are usually, in many cases, of patients with the same name. Our filing is based on the unique patient ID in Tracker 
and as we have automatic create dates for each document, we are also able to easily apply expiration and disposition policies to the patient files based on activity of the documentation. The overall value received from the electronic content management system includes less time retrieving and processing documents, resulting in an improved customer service and increase in responsiveness. All the documents are now protected, safeguarded, and backed up. There are lower operational costs with the one system. They were now able to share information and collaborate on their approval processes. We were now also able to put a disposition policy in place for compliance with regulations for document storage. There was no longer the need to keep everything forever. And ultimately, we were successful in capturing business content for integration for document processes. At the start of the project, we were given three goals, reduce costs and increase compliance, create a great user experience, and to automate process. We were able to immediately realize the goal of a great user experience as the office staff embraced the new process and started digitizing the patient files on a regular basis, so from day forward plus the archives. As the patient files are becoming digital, we are then able to reduce paper costs, storage, and enforce compliance. With the integration into their third-party applications, we were able to provide automation for the business practices. The client is now looking at even more challenges and more changes for the future utilizing this platform. The mobile apps will allow the use of the iPads being rolled out for patient data access. The dentist will be able to bring the patient files with them and they will be able to access them from the different sites. They are also looking at electronic forms to eliminate data entry for new patients by providing a tablet to the new patient to enter data directly into the form for upload into Tracker. By utilizing the electronic form, they will further reduce costs by not printing and also to minimize time for scanning, profiling, and data entry. The client has stated now that now they are able to spend more time actually using their information rather than spending the time to simply manage the information and ultimately creating a better experience for their staff and to their patients. Thank you. Mark, to you. Thank you, Joni. That was a great presentation. It's good to see a real use case of DocuShare in action and also automating those and simplifying workflow for our customer. So we, we have some quick questions that came up here. And uh, I think one of them came up during your presentation, Coleman, about Xerox uh, being involved in the legal industry. You want to answer that one? Okay. Uh, what about the legal industry? Oh, <laughs> it was such a brief question I didn't see it there. Um, yeah, so Xerox also does have a, uh, a practice focused on uh, the legal market space. Within the workflow automation business unit, we do not have a dedicated practice focused on um, legal, but um, you know, in many cases, the, uh, the technical business applications um, that customers are coming to us about, are, there are, they apply across industries. So depending on the specific requirement, um, we can certainly address legal. But we do have um, horizontal or cross-industry solutions like invoice processing, claims management, uh, HR onboarding, activities like this that apply across industries in addition to the um, discrete customized solutions like Joni just walked through. That's great. We have another uh, long question here about uh, the uh, customer implementation that Joni Wu uh, mentioned. And they want to know, how do you get a business to see the investment of a document management system and how it's worth when you're dealing with a lot of indirect costs you can't quantify or show an immediate ROI for? Joni, you want to field that question? Sure. Um, a lot of the, the cost is related to uh, labor costs and inefficient uh, processes. Right? So by streamlining a lot of the, the process, you're able to, 
to to change a lot of the you know the their knowledge workers to focus on what they are hired for, right? So there you focus on the dentist working on more patients um, rather than accessing the files or retrieving that or sharing some of the information there. Um, you know, ultimately there is. Um, generally an ROI in, in storage costs, maintaining costs, you know, with a lot of the enforcements of compliance, um, there is a price tag attached to, to storage and main, maintenance and data, right? So um, the, generally there is a, a pretty easy ROI in, in storage costs and retrieval costs um, and also front office staff in terms of um, how quickly they're able to to put the patient files in, right? So in this case, um, you know, minimizing some of the front office space to to reduce you know storage costs, right? So no longer having to go to offsite storage for keeping some of the patient files due to regulations, um, allowing the uh, you know reducing paper printing costs, right? So there's a there's an operational cost aligned with that. So you know, a lot of times right now is how do we ensure that the information is kept in one central location? And as you know, John, you know, alluded to, let's let's make sure that you know there's there's a huge governance in not allowing the users or the staff to to create their own practices, to create their own storage system, to put files in in other locations simply because that's simpler for them. Um, you know, there's a huge cost. In, in, in managing those or even losing some of these files. And so, you know, there's there's a lot of change right now in terms of, of supporting this and um, governance behind this. So a lot of the ROIs are behind governments, uh, governance and processes. I think one of the things, Johnny, I'll just, I'll just yeah, kind of ahead, chime in on that. I thought Joni had some really good points on that. I think as we deal with, with folks, I think one of the things that um, is is difficult in this industry is that when you think about this in the context of sort of a generic document management solution, you know you you almost always run into those into the ROI discussions and you know where a lot of companies wind up losing business is not so much to uh, competitors it come it comes from customers that basically say um, well we'll do this someday and and so that ROI question really is an important one to get your arms around. Um, but I think you have to do it in the context, uh, just like Joni said, of the specific business processes that you're talking about, rather than in the, concept, in the context of whether you need a document management system at all. Um, because <clears throat> I think you almost have to, at this point, adopt it as an article of faith that you need some way to manage this stuff in a coherent way. And then you start thinking about the business processes that could be tied to that capability and what you could do with it. And so both what Joni said in terms of thinking about those roles and how they can um, both save time and effort, free them up to do more things, um, mitigate risk, all that. I think the other aspect that Coleman mentioned, which is really, really cool, is that the ROI for these cross-industry um, um, cross processes, you know, things like invoice processing and stuff, is just, is just a total no-brainer um, for most organizations. And it's just that they – they just have to get on with it. And so, you know, my advice would be think about what Coleman said of some of those cross-industry cross, cross industry processes are a great place to start in terms of just getting some of the basics under, under your belt and then go on from there to more complicated things. Thanks, John and Joni. Those were some great responses uh, to Jacob. It's a great question, Jacob. Thank you. Uh, we had one more question here. Does Xerox have a standard business practice or service to deliver solutions, or was this a single customization? I think they were talking about the solution that Joni implemented. Coleman, you want to respond to that one? Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Can you read it out to me one more time? I'm looking at the yeah. back here, and I. Uh, does Xerox have a standard business practice or service to deliver solutions, or was this just a single customization? Oh, excellent question. Um, yeah, in the um, in the slide that I laid out uh, that talked about our um, office and personal productivity solutions, and then our uh, industry and cross industry solutions, um, there are two two different engagement methodologies there for the. Uh, personal and office productivity solutions, those tend to be more 
deployed as a generic service that um, it's non-differentiated and workers themselves figure out how to use it or it's, it's deployed as a, um, it's rolled out across a department with just some um, quick training because they're easy to adopt and people are, are familiar with, um, with the tools and they're designed to be easy to use. For the industry specific and the cross industry solutions like invoice processing and claims management, um, we have the technology obviously, DocuShare and other Xerox technology as well as third party technology that uh, we either license or resell. We have our methodology and our engagement process. Um, so Joni touched on that a little bit um, about uh, going into the customer, doing information gathering, defining the problem set, uh, coming up with a set of core solutions that will be deployed in to address that problem initially, and then um, you know a longer term engagement methodology in the context of digital transformation. Frankly, our our goal is to help you become a more efficient digital organization. Um, and the, the third thing that we offer is that deployment capability. So the domain expertise in your particular industry and in your industry applications, the knowledge of your business processes, and of course just the, the software development and customization, um, IT um, knowledge, you know, whatever your server envir environment is, your database and so on. And then the fourth thing, which is more of an ongoing capability, is our reporting and analytics. Um, so anybody who's got a managed print services contract is probably already familiar with this, but we offer a complete dashboard that will track uh, print, copy, scan, paper usage. Um, we also have an incremental set of uh, reporting and logging that I mentioned associated with digital alternatives where it tracks not just um, paper output or paper input, but actual usage of a document, like how do you annotate a document? Do you do it on your mobile device? Do, it, do you do it on your desktop PC? So wrapping all that analytics and reporting capability into one um, superset of data and increasingly doing that in a, in a massive uh, big data environment where we can help you not just look at your um, document-centric transactions within a department or comparing one department to another, but actually benchmarking you against your peers. So for how do you perform compared to other organizations that are in financial services or healthcare or manufacturing? Um, so those are, those are kind of the four tiers of uh, deployment capabilities and services that we offer. And we're happy to go into those or talk to your um, you know, send us an email. We're going to have a, our email address at the end of this, or contact your Xerox salesperson. Um, but it's, the analytics specifically is some really cool stuff that we're doing right now. Okay. Uh, regarding mobile, we have a question: Why limit push Xerox mobile applications to Apple iOS when Google uh, Android platform owns the market share for mobile devices and offers a lower price point options per device? Um, we actually have both uh, uh, Apple iOS app and the Android app. Um, in this case, the customer had focused on the iOS uh, platform, uh, but we have both, so we do support both. Okay, great. And how can Xerox help identify current workflows that haven't been totally digitized? I'll, I'll take that. Um, well, again, I think some of that ties to what I just covered. The, uh, the customer engagement process where as part of our methodology we do go in and we, uh, we analyze um, empirical data like your managed print services logs or um, network traffic is another way of doing it or uh, if you've got a, an industry specific tracking application like uh, Equitrack or something like that, we can take the logs on that. Uh, we also, through Newfield IT, uh, as they're a company, we will actually go on premise and analyze the amount of paper and documents you have in your environment, literally office by office, file cabinet by file cabinet. Uh, and then in addition to that, we will look at, um, we'll interview your employees, your uh, 
department heads, line of business owners, as well as analyzing your specific workflows and looking at your processes, um, both those that have been uh, that are somewhat ad hoc or manual today, but also the ones that have that have been automated or digitized, because it is our experience that even in highly automated digital workflows, there is still a tendency amongst knowledge workers to default back to paper or to manual processes when they hit a, any kind of um, a barrier like they don't feel comfortable with making a decision or um, they just don't know what the next step is or you know, the usual ones, somebody's on vacation, they never set the work process to automatically forward to um, a designee. So those are some examples, but truly, it is it is a practice within Xerox. So um, you know we can we can dedicate maybe we should dedicate an, another webinar specifically talking to Xerox methodology for um, process analysis and reengineering. Uh, my, my 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 vernacular version of <laughs> of that is uh, there was some movie that where the punchline was always follow the money, um, uh -huh. and and my advice on that one would be follow the paper. <laughs> which is, I think, exactly what you were saying. Where there, where there's paper, um, then there is business process problem, and that can tell you an awful lot. Absolutely. Uh, somebody's asking about a BlackBerry support, maybe a native uh, BlackBerry app. Is there anything on the roadmap for that? I can't. Say, I can't say that I know that there is, um, but we can certainly uh, we'll research that and email it or make that answer part of the um, yeah, total we'll get, set of answers we'll back to you on an album. Thanks. Um, somebody wants to know any plans to refresh DocuShare with the latest technology, HTML5, CSS3, etc. And I think that'll be our last question. Uh, again, this is Coleman. The answer is yes, and I can't comment further. But absolutely, stay close to us this year, and um, you know, keep asking those questions. Thanks for all the great questions. Just a few more items. Uh, we want to thank you for your attendance today. We had a lot of people attending. We're really happy to have you. Uh, we'll be sending a replay of the webinar, and also a quick survey for future topics. Um, you can contact any of our presenters. There's their email addresses. This will also be in the uh, replay. Uh, you can find, uh, find us at docushare.xerox.com. We have a landing page we'll be launching tomorrow, www.xerox.com slash simplify workflow, where you'll find out more information about the DocuShare webinar series. Um, and the DocuShare team will be at the AIM 2015 conference in San Diego, California, March 18th through the 20th. And uh, we want to hear from you. When you close your um, webinar interface, you'll be opened up to a um, quick survey. It will also be in the replay email that will be coming out to you shortly. Uh, we just want to get some more information on what kind of topics that you want to hear about. This is the first in our series. There's a lot of good questions, and we really appreciate everybody's attendance. Just one quick poll. Was this webinar worth attending and a good use of your time? Thank you. This concludes today's webinar for today. You may now disconnect your lines.